Good morning and welcome to today's Products and Focus. And very much the two things we're going to be talking about this morning is the true value of crude oil, as you might be able to tell by the title of this video, and also the Chinese GDP figures. Um, so actually, let's kickstart things off with, uh, with, with crude and my rather sensationalist headline there. Uh, and this is actually coming through a number of the news wires this morning. So you, you know, obviously you've got WTI and you've got Brent. So you've got two different types of crude. Um, they both have slightly different purities. Uh, one is slightly better than the other for certain forms of industry. Now, there's actually a huge amount of other crude oil contracts out there which are traded all across the world. And what we're gonna do right now is focus on some of the American contracts. So you've got a, a, a refinery in North Dakota that actually is charging uh, oil producers to take their oil uh, to refine it. And uh, it, they're, they're, actually char they're actually charging 50 cents per, per barrel. And it's for a very specific, very sulfur uh, rich type of crude oil uh, in, in that area that's actually really tough to refine. But it does give you a bit of an idea about how, how bad th some things are for, for some refineries. Um, when uh, some, for some, some oil producers, when you actually have to pay someone to take your oil and um, and refine it for you, and you actually are making a loss on each one of those barrels that, that are coming in. Now, obviously, they refine it, and the and the output means they still get some profit. Um, but there's no there's no posit there's no net positive on the barrel of crude as you pass it across, as there is with most other forms of oil out there. In fact, there's a, there's another refinery in um, uh, in Kansas, I believe, where they only pay the refinery are only paying twelve dollars fifty cents for a barrel of oil as well. So. The true value of oil, it depends on the, on the region that, that, that you're in, but obviously you have the global contracts, WTI and, and Brent Crude, that are widely quoted in the press. But depending on where you go, uh, in, in America as a, as a prime example, you can get substantially less. And that kind of maybe gives you an idea about how bad the energy sector is in that part of the world and how close, how teetering on the edge some of these companies are should the pain still come. So less about those uh, those minor contracts. Uh, WTI this morning actually has, has been pushing up high on, on the back of those uh, Chinese GDP figures, which came in at 6.8%. And that's the first time China has been below 7% GDP growth since 2009. And that was just a little bit after the financial crisis. So pretty much broadly in line with expectations. Retail sales were slightly lower than expected, the same with industrial output for China. But the market has collectively taken uh, a sigh of relief that it wasn't as bad as expected. Now, the truth is, guys, and we've talked about this before in, in these sessions, the credibility of the Chinese numbers really has to be called into question. Uh, you know, they're not quite as transparent as uh, as what you would get in Europe or the, or, or the US or under such close scrutiny, because you can't really question it that much. Um, so. From my, from my own perspective, it seems slightly convenient that these figures came in broadly in line with expectations at a time where it was absolutely essential that they did because if they came in really negative, the impact of the markets would be quite severe. However, uh, the markets have taken it as a, as, a, as a nice boost. You've got the Germany 30 was up 2% first thing this morning, quite a big Chinese proxy. Um, the, the US 30 up about 200 points and uh, the UK 100 up one, about 1.6%. Um, the thing is, China actually has a lot of gas left in the tank should there be a whole bunch of downturn uh, in, in that area. Their base rate of interest rates is, is over 4%. They've got still quite a lot of money in the bank. They still, still can do a lot with the yuan. If you look at uh, Europe and the US, um, there really isn't that, that same uh, room for, for, for maneuver. So, China is obviously still a big concern, but a, a slowdown in, in China can be tackled with with a lot of uh, a lot of instruments that the uh, the People's Bank can deal with. Um, is if we start to have a little bit more pressure in the eurozone, there's very little they can do to um, to fight against that pain. So that's where where the big concerns are. Um, so we'll see how things pan out. But less about the fundamentals. Let's talk a little bit more about the technicals, and we're going to go straight in to the US 30 first thing as ever. So let's have a look at things from a technical perspective. So 77% of CMT market clients are currently uh, short on the US 30. You can see we have bounced off that uh, 16,000 level. And a lot of that has come from, from the Chinese GDP figures. Uh, we do have the ZEW business report coming out of uh, Germany later on today, but we'll talk about that 
in a little second. So you can see a very strong bullish engulfing pattern. We're at the top range, uh, top end of its range today. Um, the RSI has crossed the 30% level. That's a, that's a bullish signal. And the slow stochastic has not yet crossed the 20% level, but it's not that far away from it right now. Moving quite quickly on to the UK 100, similar bounce. Commodity markets obviously done quite, quite well. Even though the US dollar has, uh, has also rallied, commodities have bounced in the back of the, uh, of the macro data from China. Uh, very strong uh, bullish engulfing pattern. Stopping shy of uh, 58.82, just maybe breaking through it right now. 88% of CMC Marks clients are currently long, so they must surely be very happy today. And you do have a kind of a bullish crossover on the slow stochastic there to look forward to as well. Japan 225, strong uh, bounce. Similar, most global equity markets have this big massive candle first thing this morning. 17,182 is the potential resistance level which we're at right now. You do have a buy signal on the RSI and you're getting close to it in a slow stochastic as well. Moving on to dollar yen. Dollar yen has 57% uh, sellers. So I guess uh, traders aren't very sure what to do. We're a little bit far away from the next potential resistance at 118 spot 33. You've got a bullish cross on the MACD just about to happen. Uh, bullish cross over the RSI and the slow stochastic. So all in all, should we be able to break through 118 spot 33? That would be quite impressive, but we might be capped at 21 period SMA. Though one thing to think about is the move uh, that we're seeing on equities right now, you know, risk is back on for now. There are a large number of other traders out there that might see this as an opportunity to go short. Okay, so uh, I guess the question is, what's next? What's the major bit? What's the next major bit of news that's going to impact the markets? But we'll talk about that in a second. That's where we are with dollar yen. Moving on to West Texas crude, uh, a lot of uncertainty right there. Thirty-three percent of CMC Marcus clients are currently short. Show a lot of indecision. We do have a, a bullish engulfing pattern so far this morning, but it's hardly a gigantic candle. Um, we are in the middle of two ranges. We're far away from potential resistance. Though I would say if you were looking for something uh, kind of short term, you could take the tip of this candle here and say that's a potential resistance. 29 spot 66, which is pretty much where we are right now. Moving on to gold. Uh, gold, uh, as I said before, it's falling a little bit out of favor for uh, as a safe haven asset. Dolly ends uh, a, a better proxy in that regard, but we are down at potential support at 1,085. We do have a bullish crossover, a golden cross in the moving averages. The other technicals are relatively neutral. Um, we could be trading between these two ranges right here, but for now, 1,085 is a strategic level. Just below that are the two moving averages, so it should be support in the, in the short term. 58% of CC Marcus clients are currently long. So finishing up with the FX pairs, Euro dollar uh, still reversing into inside this uh, potential descending triangle formation. I'm not really that excited about Euro dollar until it breaks out one side or the other. 65% of CMT Marcus clients are currently short. And finishing up with GBP USD, this poor FX pair has been getting absolutely blasted the last number of sessions. It has had a dead cat bounce potentially of one spot 4230. The thing is, this this is just a relief rally. There's not any positive uh, GBP data out there. In fact, the dollar is kind of rampant across uh, most other FX pairs right now. If we break below one spot 4230, uh, you are looking at a potential move that much further down. Let me just jump onto uh, onto a monthly chart there. Oh God, it's not looking too good once we break through that level, to be honest, because there, there literally is no other support levels uh, to look forward to. So um, I really hope that the Sterling manages to, uh, to, to keep a little bit of strength. Otherwise, it's going to be getting a lot more expensive uh, for me to go on holiday and for you guys at home as well. But nevertheless, CMT Marcus clients, 92% short. So they're obviously expecting a little bit more pain uh, to look forward to. So uh, let's see what happens. Well, guys, um, actually, before I finish up, I don't want to forget about uh, jumping onto my market calendar. Um, we do still have that ZDW business report. If you're trading Euro dollar or the DAX, you don't want to miss that. That's at 10 a.m. UK time. Fast forward onto Wednesday, you do have, uh, you still have US uh, CPI and housing starts as well. Well, guys, thank you very much for watching. Best of luck with your trading. I want to join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next. Thank you very much and goodbye.